The third step for a science project is to research and form a hypothesis. Now you want to research um, from books from the library or research on the internet and you want to come up with your guess. You can do some initial experimenting to help you form that guess, that hypothesis, but you want to make sure you really spend some time on this and be really careful because you cannot change your hypothesis in the middle of doing your project. Now, if you want to do the whole project and reject your hypothesis at the end, that is totally great. It is okay to bring um, a science project to a fair and say, this is what I learned, I rejected my hypothesis, and that is perfectly fine. If you have time and you want to um, do a whole new project and start over, that is perfectly fine too, and you can mention at the science project that you, you tested multiple times and that you formed new hypotheses. And that's okay. It's okay to make a more interesting um, project. So the scientific method is kind of circular. Sometimes you finish and you come up with more questions and you form a new hypothesis. But you need to be careful. Choose a good, uh, a good hypothesis before you begin your, your sci um, science project. So before you begin testing. Now I'm going to give you some examples. For the question, does fresh ground flour make better biscuits than store-bought flour? The first hypothesis was, I think biscuits made from fresh ground flour will have better taste than biscuits made from store-bought flour. Now for this, she actually did an opinion survey, and because she was using human um, subjects, she needed to get special, um, special uh, um, qualifications for doing that. So it's an institutional review board and I will discuss that in a different video. So before you use human subjects you need to get special approval. Her second hypothesis, which is rare, most um, projects do not have two hypotheses, but it was a totally different question. I mean, um, guess, I think biscuits made from store-bought whole wheat flour will be shorter and heavier than biscuits made from other flours. So she felt that the store-bought flour would make a heavier biscuit than, than something that was fresh ground. The hypothesis for the question, do different liquids change bone strength? The hypothesis was the liquids that are more acidy will make the bones weaker faster, and then putting the jars in the oven will speed up the reaction. So she also had two different hypotheses for that project. For the question, does a person's age or gender affect which memory techniques will work best for them? Her hypothesis was that I think all people will, will remember better when they associate words with actions, pictures, or stories. I believe that regardless of the age, a majority of males will remember better with pictures, and that females will remember better with stories. That was her guess. Um, for the purpose, does the weight of paper airplane affect how paper airplane will fly? Um, the hypothesis was, I think the 67 pound paper airplanes will fly the best because the 24 pound paper is too floppy and the 110 pound paper is too heavy. For the question, how fast will ice melt on different surfaces, the hypothesis was, I think ice cubes will melt fastest on marble and slowest on styrofoam. For the question, what causes smells to dwindle the fastest, her hypothesis was, I think smells will dwindle the fastest when I already have olfactory fatigue from another smell. So in forming your hypothesis or your guess, first of all do the research, then do some initial testing, and then come up with a hypothesis, and then stick with that one, and use that all the way through your testing then you may come up with a new one and redo the, the project.